New York City, an iconic city that has hosted some of history's most influential and innovative people in the world. A perfect setting for the World Innovation Forum and innovation leaders discussing topics ranging from technology to energy. Human ingenuity, innovation, and technology hold the key to unlocking energy needed today and in the future. So what is innovation? One of the things I've learned about innovation is that it's not about a spreadsheet, it's not about the laws of physics so much, it's passionate entrepreneurs in and outside of companies. There is no universal innovation definition. There are some models for innovation, what innovation is, you know, and the, the most famous one is the seven level model. And, you know, at the, at the lowest level you're talking about doing things more efficient and doing things more effective. And at the other end of the scale you talk around doing things which never have been done or doing things which nobody thinks can be done in the first place. When I think of innovation, it's really about um, how do we change it's really to the energy issue. It's how do we change behavior um, to work with technologies that are scalable and profitable. Because um, a lot of the innovation in technology that we're looking at is going to take, you know, 30 years to, to mature. Now, innovation is only going to succeed within an economic and a social and technical context. So by Challenger, we are able to craft our innovation so it will be successful no matter what happens, we can create no regrets innovations. And by doing that, um, the execution risk of, of innovation is completely different. 30 years is a long time in the social media age. News, ideas, status, and latest updates seem to travel faster than the speed of light. Partnering with other companies, academia, and experts to share ideas helps speed up innovative developments. In short, gets results. I think that uh, open innovation is at the heart of uh, many solutions in many industries. I, I think great ideas happen when you connect across boundaries that don't usually connect with each other. We talk about open innovation, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about things like that, we talk about uh, open source. Uh, all of these things are tangentially related and I think the, the most important thing about innovation is, is can you define what it is that you're going after when you're looking to solve a problem and the way in which you go about it. Bright ideas from our people and partners have sparked some groundbreaking technologies. Over the coming decades, the need for creative solutions will grow as society seeks ways to meet growing energy demand with less environmental impact. How do we sustain the drive for innovation and collaborate across unusual boundaries better? I think who's driving it is always people, highly motivated individuals that believe they have an idea that could change the game and they just need a little space to get something going. Well, you know, energy is primary, so we, we, we need to think about energy in terms of the economy, but, but if you look at the economy as a whole, we're in an economy of ideas, mm. most of its services. So how this interplay of ideas works uh, between ideas which are generate outside companies, inside companies, and this interplay hasn't really been figured out. Corporations could do certain things tremendously well and other things less. And finding that level of partnerships and the balances between those things will be the, the story of the next decade or the next two decades, certainly. Big ideas and big innovations take a, a long time to come to fruition. How can we bridge the gap between now and, and then? Well, it's often, I think, a case of looking for things that are uh, 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 can make use of existing infrastructure. And the other thing is to look at um, how we, how we society, actually use energy. So this is about choices, usage and behaviours. As an innovator, you cannot remember past failures because that becomes a box for you. I think two key things that I think that are, are worth tackling. One is um, the cost of uh, bringing the cost of transactions down. And by transaction, we mean making any kind of connection. It could be a plane trip, it could be a phone call, it can be a click on your mouse. But bringing down that cost of connecting is the, one of the big things. The other one is now that we have so many opportunities to connect with so many people, it's how do you connect with the right people? Because open innovation and community-driven innovation is not good for everyone. And we started talking about that here. And basically, here's a way to think about it. If you got your users on the bottom, and you've got your makers of your product on the top, and you have few over here and many at the far, but when you break it down to the algorithm that actually works, you could have a lot of people that could solve on that algorithm and a lot of people that could
could solve, that could use the algorithm. We no longer live in a community-based society. We live in a global society that's connected through technology. It's all about the experience. It's all about networking. It's all about talking to each other and extracting ideas and implementing strategies to make them happen. Meeting future increases in energy demand while managing the impact of our energy use is a critical component in looking at how innovation can help us address our energy future overall. We have to make our existing resources uh, cleaner, more sustainable, less impactful, use them more efficiently. The, the world in which we, we, we're used to is the world in which energy is equated with oil. And this is not the world that we're going into the future. Energy is going to mean many, many things. It's going to be wind, it's going to be solar, it's going to be biofuels, different types of biofuels, geothermal, and oil and gas. Now, we can either take this and think of this as a serious problem, or we can think of this as the most exciting innovation and entrepreneurial problem in a generation. If you look around and you say everything is going to change, there is tremendous opportunity, both at the level of Shell, but, but, but energy isn't just Shell, it's our energy. I think that the most important thing for us is to look at energy from a systemic perspective, and that is change the system makes a better use of energy. And cars use 70% of our U.S. oil end use, whether it's imported or domestic, 7-0%. So if you can change the way that vehicles work, and that's really specifically cars and light trucks, it's not over the road transportation in class A trucks or buildings or planes. And so there we have a massive effect on energy demand. The basic answer is we need to change the way we do things and practice reverse innovation, starting from where energy efficiency is important. Big organizations do have a problem. Uh, and if they keep on thinking and acting the way they've been acting and thinking the past hundred years, uh, they will not only solve the problems, but they will get into trouble themselves as well. Because innovation is not born from any set formula or pre-existing standards, we must encourage innovation. Essentially, change our game to get us to the next big innovation. Look at the whole system. Big ideas are never going to come from optimizing a subpart of the system. We looked at the healthcare system. Big ideas come from looking at the whole system and a willingness to ask fairly fundamental questions. Technology does not equal innovation. Better tech isn't better innovation. They are quite different things. Um, of course, technology innovates by itself, but finding out how to use technology in appropriate ways. Ideas are a wonderful thing. Uh, to be able to develop a platform to extract ideas, to help people formulate their strategies, if they're viable or not, and a way to implement those strategies on a completely blank state. New ideas, new ways of doing things, new collaborations, new associations, new affiliations on a global scale. By analogy, so there's much untapped opportunity by looking to other industries that have solved things and abstracting the principles by which uh, new solutions have come up. We talked about the IT sector and the development of the internet. Uh, by connecting, so by connecting with people in different industries uh, directly, not just by analogy, and, and, and thinking about how uh, uh, the, the flow of energy in one might be applicable to another and, uh, you know, say the human body and, and uh, in our ecosystem of energy. And innovation is by, the, don't just think of the products, think about the drivers that change perceptions on how people pick up on innovations. I think we're doing a lot of exciting things in innovation. We're pushing the frontiers of developing resources in, in the deep waters of the world. We're, we're developing stranded gas with new ideas, but they're also not enough. Future energy solutions, including major projects, are increasing in size and complexity. They require innovative technology solutions and a much greater range of expert teams to work together.